Good morning, St. Monica and St. Thomas RCIA. So as you know, we're not going to meet tonight. And uh, after the first scrutiny on the third Sunday of Lent, we normally work on the creed and talk about the parts of the creed. So I want to spend a little time with you guys this morning working on that and then getting you ready and keeping us on track for um, Easter vigil services and bringing you guys into the church, of course. So I hope everybody's doing okay. And we'll just spend a few minutes working on this and uh, see how it goes, okay? So on screen, you should be able to see the first part of the creed. The Nicene Creed was created at a time when there was a lot of controversy between who Jesus was and whether he was fully God or fully man, which we, of course, know that we believe that he is fully both, and the Trinity and how he was related to God. So the creed, uh, come from the Nicene and Constantinople councils, allowed us to have this statement of faith that we say each and every week to get us ready, to remind us of our beliefs and where we stand as far as the church is concerned with Jesus. So you'll notice the first part, which is right here on the screen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. So this creates the knowledge where God, everything starts with God. God is the maker of all of us, everything we see and everything we don't see. And so that always brings up some imagination a little bit about you know, what is he talking about? But angels and heaven and and uh, our soul, which we can't see. We see the visible uh, reality of the body, but we can't quite see that. But yet it is made visible by the body. And so we establish this um, primal control, not primal control, but primal um, authority with God the Father. The next part, which here it comes, yeah, there it is, uh, deals with uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. So with that very first sentence, we're establishing the link between God and Jesus. And Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. And if you... Um, Lots of folks remember that during the translation change, uh, this word consubstantial uh, is a word that um, can be kind of strange to us, but it means of, of the same substance with the Father. So God and the Father are one. Although we see the manifestation of Jesus on earth, he is still uh, the same substance as the Father. Through him, all things were made. So again, making that connection to the creed once again, not to the creed, but to the creation once again. And then the next part was still dealing with Jesus. And actually this part is the biggest part because there was the most controversy about, wow, we see this guy, Jesus on earth. He looks like a human and he walked around like a human and talked like a human, but he also was fully God at the very same time. So that creates, this is why this part has so much more detail and makes many statements about God and then Jesus. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, where the God the Father, and by the Holy Spirit, and again introducing the idea of the Holy Spirit as the third part of the Trinity, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man, truly man, truly spirit. He came from heaven and Mary, and so joining those two together. It's interesting to notice that uh, Pontius Pilate is mentioned here, and it just reminds us kind of of our brokenness. For his sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, that even though we have great disdain for Pontius Pilate and know what he was guilty of, yet we see our brokenness here as well. And it does remind us of our brokenness because here comes the resurrection part. For our sake, he was crucified. Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. All the prophets are involved here in accordance with the scriptures, the prophecy of a savior, Emmanuel, God with us, and all of that coming together in this very same part. And then the promise of heaven. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. The primacy of God, once again, found also in Jesus. Yes, there is a time, coming back from the Pontius Pilate comment from earlier, judge the living and the dead. Uh, when will judgment day come? Well, we actually 
you know, we st we live in that hope that Judgment Day will come and we'll be judged for what we've done and we'll be accepting the kingdom of God. Some people won't make it and they're already dead and they're awaiting final judgment. But God continues to remind us of his mercy because he suffered for us. And I think that's a key thing. He did not have to suffer as we talked about a couple weeks ago um, in church. He suffered. He did not have to suffer. He did not have to be buried. And he did not have to do this. But he went through this process as a human to show us the way of how this works and to guarantee us again with that according to the scriptures statement again there it is there it is accordance with the scriptures reminding us of those promises of god that they are constantly there and then we have the holy spirit the third person of the trinity i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son key statement proceeds from the father and the son not separately but together and who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. All three of them, all three of the uh, persons of the Trinity, are unified together. And we adore them and glorify them. We thank them for their gifts. And we ask them for their help. And most importantly, for all of us broken folks, we ask them for their mercy and their grace. Another statement spoken through the prophets, speaking of the Spirit. Um, Elijah was taken up in the Spirit. We have all kinds of references to the Spirit. And finally, the last part that deals with the visible church and sacraments. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So again, reminding us of the, the four marks of our church. It's one. It's holy. Well, we work on that, you know, I mean, it's his, but it is holy because Jesus is in charge and Jesus is the ultimate person that keeps us on track. It's Catholic, meaning universal, the universality of the church that is found all over the world and apostolic. We can trace the line of apostles. For example, our apostle, Archbishop Kirks, the three bishops ordained him. And so we can trace those three bishops and look at what three bishops uh, ordained him. Um, not, not ordained, because they're already ordained. Uh, let me think of the right word. Uh, I can't think of it. It'll come in a minute, sorry. But the rose to the, who made them uh, bishops. And we could trace all that way back to, to St. Peter, the first, of, the first bishop of the church. And so that's where we can claim one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. So that is our creed statement. And we say it each and every Sunday to remind us. And again, for those who can go way back, they're a little more... Um, before the translation, we, we used to say, we believe in one God, but now we make the statement, I believe. It more accurately, uh, it's a more accurate translation, but it also says something, I believe, together with all these believers around us, saying that together, I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. And I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church that pulls everything together and ensures our salvation and helps us on our journey of faith. Not, a, not an easy journey by any means, but it's a journey that when we pray together and listen to God's word through the apostles and through the scriptures, and we try to adhere always to God's mercy, love, and grace, that the last statement, in the life of the world to come. That's our goal, our mission in life, to be there and be ready and do everything we can to prepare ourselves for that coming day and also drag our friends and family along with us. So uh, I hope you learned a little bit about the creed today. Um, RCI people will keep praying for you. Know that we're in this, we're trying to figure this out too as we go, but we'll help each other through these videos and just short little things to help us on our journey of faith. Let us pray together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and merciful God, I thank you for the gift of all of us. Please continue to guide and strengthen each of our RCI members as they continue this journey of faith. 
May you bless and protect them, keep them safe, and please, Lord, keep all the families of St. Thomas and St. Monica and all those that we know and all of our friends and family that might be watching. Please bless each family, guide and strengthen, and protect them. And I send you this blessing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Wash those hands, and we'll see you soon.